Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of T-Dog RC. This is part four of the PC6 Porter build. And in this episode, I'm gonna be working on the wings and the engine cow um, and all that sort of stuff. So wings are gonna be pretty straightforward. Engine cows are gonna be a little bit more tricky, but uh, we'll sort it out, I'm sure. I've also got some other exciting tech news to tell you, um, but before we get started, if this is the first time you've found the channel and you're into fixed wing RC, whether that's Boltzer, Nitro, uh, Foam, FPV, EDFs, all that sort of stuff, then this is definitely gonna be a channel that you're gonna to want to subscribe to. So please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and uh, help me out. And without further ado, let's get stuck in. So, before we actually get started into the build, the exciting tech news is that I have invested in some new equipment for the channel. Um, obviously want to give you guys the best experience, of course, if you're a subscriber of mine. Um, so I've got a new Sony camera, a ZV-1 or ZV-1, depending on where you come from, uh, which is what I'm going to be using to film in the workshop. That should give me much better uh, coverage, much better clearer pictures, uh, particularly when I'm doing close-ups and stuff like that as well. Uh, I'll still use the uh, GoPro for out on the field because that works really well, but I bought another GoPro to do some filming in, uh, in the workshop and that's what I've always been using, but it's not great at doing close-up shots and detailed shots and that sort of stuff. So hopefully this one will be a lot better, a lot more professional. And I've also bought um, one of these Rode uh, wireless lapel mics rather than having my other ones a Rode but it's a wired mic uh, and it's a bit of a faff when you've got it plugged into the camera and you're trying to sort of maneuver around the workshop so these should be a lot easier to use and again that should give a really nice sound quality. Anyway that's enough of that. Um, what we're talking about today is these. So these are the wings and very big they are too. This is just one wing, the other one's that side, and they are, as usual for VQ, very nicely packed indeed. So we've got to start, um, first of all, of course, by getting these out of the packaging, uh, then jobs to do on the wings is actually not that much, to be honest. I've just got to hook the ailerons up, obviously install the aileron servo, get the ailerons ho hooked up. Same for the flaps, it's got some big flaps on this with it being a stall aircraft. Uh, get the servo installed for that. Pull the wires through, hopefully. Uh, certainly known on other VQ models, they leave you a little cord inside the wing that's already there so you can pull the servo lead through, so that's good. Uh, and then once I've done that, it's then starting really on the, uh, the cow for the engine, well, I'm getting the engine mounted as well, actually. Um, so we've got to get, get that mounted first and then work on the cow, which is not something I enjoy because it's, um, it's one of those jobs where you've got to make sure you've got it absolutely right and, of course, measure it lots of times before you make the cuts because once you've drilled a hole through the cow, if it's in the wrong place, you're a bit snookered, really. Um, but that'll come later on in the episode. First of all, we're going to get stuck into the wings. So I'll stick the camera up on my other mount uh, and we'll, we'll get these wings unpackaged and uh, see what we've got to do. Okay, so I've got all the components laid out that I need to sort the wings out. And as I said, it's a fairly basic setup. Um, so I've got my four servos. These are standard sized servos. They're um, digital metal geared. Um, I know they're not high tech or Futaba servos or something like that. Um, but I have heard good reviews of these, so we'll see how they go. Um, they seem okay from what I've played with so far, so uh, we'll have to just hope that they're going to be all right. Um, so yeah, four of those, and full size as well, like I say, standard size, which is, which is kind of unusual sometimes for the wings, but I guess it is a pretty big model. Um, and then we've got all the other bits that I need, so I've got the four push rods with the clevises already on, um, control horns, I'm not sure whether the holes for the control horns are pre-drilled, so I'm going to have to check that, 
um, can't quite see at the minute and then the fasteners for the push rods and then you've also got these four dowels which um, go into the, there are some pre-drilled holes in the ends of the wings and that's just to help locate these into the uh, fuselage and then there's a big aluminium bar that slots between the two wings and then there's a screw just to fasten them in place or a couple of screws I think um, so yeah it's fairly straightforward it shouldn't take me very long to do this hopefully uh, but first job is to get the servos screwed into the wings um, so I'll get that done get it hooked up so the next time you see this you should have two servos in and hooked up to all the control horns and also Obviously this is the underside of the wing where the servos go, but superb scheme uh, uh, with the Red Bull and it is actually the Red Bull on the back, on the underneath. So that's going to look great when it's in the, uh, in the air. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. So uh, let me get stuck into this and then I'll be back. Right then, um, I was just reviewing that last clip I did and it's quite funny because I said in there that it wouldn't take me long to get this done. But actually this is two weeks or so later from filming that last clip. Um, nothing to do with building the wing of course, but uh, we've had some pretty shocking weather here in the UK. We've even had a fair bit of snow and it's been a bit of a struggle. Getting into the workshop, we're also having uh, an extension done on the house. Not that anyone's bothered or interested in that, but that's caused me a little bit of chaos in the last couple of weeks as well. But... I have completed the wings, so uh, this is the uh, one of the wing panels here. Um, so servos are mounted. A couple of things just to mention here: um, there are pull cords for the aileron included, so that's handy. So there's a cotton pull cord in there that uh, is kind of glued in with a piece of wood, and you just snap that off, uh, and then you tie your extension. Uh, sorry, tie your servo lead to that, and it allows you to pull it through which is great, no faffing around with that. I have obviously had to have some pretty big extension leads and again I've used my cable tie method where I've joined the extension leads together. Um, a little cable tie pulled that tight so um, the idea being that that doesn't come undone during flight because that would be a problem. So that's that. A couple of other bits to mention here is that the control horns included in the kit are that there are four screw um, or bolt through control horns uh, and then there's one of these ratchet system ones where it's, it's almost like a cable tie type idea behind it where it's got a piece uh, of plastic with notches on and then you've got like a backing piece which you put on and tighten that up and it works a bit like a cable tie. That's fine, except that in the instructions it says that all the control horns are these bolt through type, um, but they're not. And the surfaces, at the, at the roots of the surface, so f for the flaps for example, it's, it's a real thick chunky piece of um, wood. So there's no way that the ratchet cable tie, uh, sorry, ratchet control horn is going to go through there, it's just the, the surface is far too thick. Um, so that's a bit of a problem because it looks like they've included the wrong control horns in the kit. But what I decided to do was um, I've used the bolt through ones for the air runs because I want to make sure that they're not going to come off. And for these ones what I did was I ended up cutting a slot in the wood uh, and then I've drilled a hole in the, um, the, the uh, control horn uh, the, where the, the ratchet system normally is and it's basically a plastic um, piece of plastic about that long on the other side of this control horn uh, so I've, I've then filled the hole up with epoxy and then pushed this in and that, that should, this is obviously just on the flap um, and it's, it's pretty damn solid I've got to say so um, I'm, I'm pretty happy that that's not going to come out um, worst case scenario if it did come loose it is only on the flaps um, and hopefully I'd still be able to control the model and, and land it, but it, it's, I, I'm very confident that that's not going to come undone. And with me drilling the hole uh, in the, the tag on the other side, um, that's just to sort of allow the epoxy to go through the hole and really make it strong. So uh, that was a bit of a faff to do that, but one of those things. I did have a look through my uh, box of bits and I've got all sorts of control horns, but I haven't got anything that would go, th I haven't got any bases big as this that would bolt through. So uh, this is why I decided to, um, to 
to cut the slot and use these. The other issue I had was that um, the, the bolts that they include in the kit aren't long enough, or if they are long enough, they say to use the same bolts on the elevators, which I did, and I do remember thinking back to when I did the elevator, thinking the bolt comes through quite a long way and I snipped, snipped I cut them down, but I checked back on the instructions when I did these, because these bolts were too short, so they wouldn't even go through to the other side. And I checked on the instructions and it definitely says to use the same bolts for the elevators and the aileron, so it's not like I got them mixed up. Um, but I think the instructions are probably wrong. And the ones I used on the elevators were actually the aileron ones, and they should have been, um, they were a lot longer. Anyway, I had to order some bolts off the internet, uh, and I just got a pack of these and I decided to get some um, hex head ones, I don't know if you can see that there on the camera, uh, just about, yeah, much easier now I've got my new camera and not relying on the GoPro to try and focus, so they're hex head, and they just make a little bit of a nicer finish, because the problem is with these little small cross head screws is it's very easy to uh, to sort of uh, strip the, uh, the, the cross head on the top when you tighten them up, whereas the hex head one's much, uh, much better. You'll also maybe notice that the arms are facing that way. Um, normally you would have them both in the same direction and the opposite on the other wing, but I'm going to be using a Y lead for the flaps. So I need to make sure the flaps both move in the same direction, which is why I've done it like that, but I'm not using a Y lead for the ailerons. They're going to be in their own separate channel on the receiver, um, which and I'll just use a mix to sort those out. The other thing I've done just to make life a little bit easier is I have used different coloured servo leads. So the black, red and white is for the ailerons and then the brown, red and yellow is for the flaps. And that will be reflected on my leads coming out of the receiver. So it just makes it a little bit easier to plug in. So um, I think now it is high time we got these wings temporarily mounted onto the fuselage and I get the camera moved into position and we, and we take a look how this beast is shaping up. So give me a few seconds uh, and it won't be two weeks this time, it is literally going to be a few minutes. I'm going to swivel the camera around and uh, let's have a look. Okay so there she is with the wings on. And uh, I can tell you that that was definitely a bit of a struggle. It barely just fits in my workshop. I mean, the, the wings are almost as wide as the, uh, the workshop itself. So it's uh, certainly the biggest model I've had in here. Um, but it's really starting to look very nice now. Um, really looking forward to sort of getting this outside and uh, showing some some pictures of it out there because you can't really get the full sort of size in here because you can't you can't see everything but yeah the wings are on I've also temporarily pushed the cowl on and one thing I've noticed already is that these fake exhausts um, they are they they're protruding into the cowl a little bit too much and they're blocking the engine mount um, so that they're sort of hitting each other basically so the cow doesn't go on properly so that's something I'm going to have to address get these back into position I can still see the marks on there where where these were uh, were glued in and then probably going to have to trim off the inside of those uh, just to make sure it fits with the engine mount inside there I don't think you can oh you can see I do love this camera um, yeah, so you can see there that the end of the engine mount hits the exhaust stack there, and it's the same on the other side as well. So that's just something you're going to have to fiddle with. But we'll sort it. But yeah, look at this. Absolutely huge. But looking superb. I've got this pushed right to the back of my workshop as well. The only other thing I want to sort out is this hatch here is a bit rubbish. It's... Um, it's it's very sort of thin ply and it's got a quite a bow in it and if you can pick that up there on the camera and subsequently it leaves a bit of a nasty dip there so that's something as well I'm gonna have to uh, fit uh, sorry 
glue in a sort of just a strengthening piece of ply across here and flatten that out just to make sure that's a nice tight fit because you know I'm not going crazy uh, on this it's not like a super scale model for me but um, that I don't like that that just looks a bit sloppy there so we'll uh, we'll get that sorted and next job for me now as part of this video is to start getting the cow fitted uh, we'll take our time with it I might try a new method of putting some paper templates down the side uh, when I've got the engine mounted. So put those down the side there uh, and then measure out where the holes are against that paper template and then um, then that should come level with the cowl and I can see, I can basically just drill through the template and that should drill through the cowl. That's the idea anyway. It's something that I've seen uh, a while ago actually, probably over a year ago, somewhere on YouTube uh, someone was showing their method of um, getting a cow properly uh, drilled out and how to make it easy to do it. So that's what I'm going to have a go with. So let me get stuck into that. Uh, I'll get the engine mounted next, see how it, um, how the cow sort of goes on just with the engine and without the exhaust, and then start measuring up and getting it cut. So sit tight and that's going to be the next part of this video. Right then, so I've got the engine mounted. Um, I've taken the silencer off just to make life a little bit easier. I'm going to do that last of all. And then on this side, uh, the needle valve is actually pretty much level with the, uh, the firewall. So that's, that's quite handy that it's like that. And what I'm going to do is put a piece of... Um, metal in there, um, some push rod, um, and just so I can, obviously that's going to poke out the side of the cow and allow me to adjust the needle valve. I'll just put a uh, right angle bend on that to um, give me a little handle to grab onto. And and that's really nice because as I said, it's, it's, it's literally level with the end of the, um, the firewall there. So I actually, once I've measured that, only need to drill a small hole in the cow for that to go through. So that's good. And then initial sort of offering up of the cow, um, the main cylinder head here is uh, obviously massively in the way. So I've got to cut that out of the bottom of the cow. Um, so that's my next job really is to get this, um, just put some masking tape on this, get it marked up. And then I'll use my Dremel to uh, with a disc cutter on it to, to cut that out. And I am going to be fairly... Uh, generous with the the hole if you like um, I'm going to cut a fairly large hole in here probably slightly oversized because uh, it aids cooling of course but also you know you do need to be able to get access to this and as it's it's going to be on the bottom of the cow you're not really going to see it um, unless you know you fly it low overhead which I'm not too worried about anyway if you just see the cylinder head sticking out the bottom uh, but it will just make life a lot easier to cut uh, a decent sized hole rather than trying to get it like super tight uh, towards the uh, you know like almost touching the uh, cylinder head um, it would just be easy to do it like this so it's time to get the Dremel out and get cutting Right then, so the cowl is on and I have to say it was a fairly straightforward process actually. I'm really pleasantly surprised. Um, I'm never a big fan of putting cows on because it is, you know, if you make a mistake and drill a hole in the wrong place, um, you're a little bit snookered. But um, this one's gone on really well. Um, so I've got it in position. You can see from this view, I've just got the prop back plate hanging out there just a, the perfect amount I think uh, again I can adjust the cow slightly if that's going to give me a bit too much of a gap between the back plate on the spinner and the uh, front of this cow then underneath so this is where I cut the slot out underneath um, I've tried to be as economical as I could I maybe could have obviously made it a little bit um, wider here but um, 
it gives me plenty of access up here anyway and get to the glow plug and all that sort of stuff so and obviously you're not going to see the bottom um, but that it does fit on really nice and then at the front here I've only cut out um, just enough really for the uh, the push rod outers there so uh, just to give them some clearance and then coming around here it is quite tight but that's that's fine I'm okay with that and then the great news is the exhaust didn't need a hole cutting in the side of the cow as you can see there because it's actually pretty much at the bottom of the cow but I have had to cut a slot here otherwise I couldn't get the exhaust um, in because it was just fouling with the edge of the cow here so I've just cut a little slot out there but that's I'm quite happy with that looks quite neat if you ask me um, and also the great thing is it means I can get to this nut here and really tighten the exhaust up because the exhaust on these things are renowned for coming loose and it's a real tricky situation if you can't get to this because the cow's in the way and it comes off and then you, you're down at the field trying to tighten it up and you've got to take all the cow to bits so that's great and then the needle valve on this side as you can see there I've literally just got this tiny little hole there and then that is actually in the needle valve now so that's in position um, and as you can see it just pokes out the side so I just need to turn that into a little uh, right angle so I can uh, turn it and see where it is as well so and as you can see from this angle as well the cow looks nice and tight when I fasten it in place I just need to pull these bits in at the bottom here just to get it nice and tight onto the fuselage but I'm really quite pleased with that personally I'm sure there's people out there that could probably do a better job but uh, yeah I'm quite happy with that just got to see as I say how it the spinner looks once it's on because what I don't want is for the spinner to be completely offset so I might just have to play around with the positioning there a little bit um, to fasten the cowl on I've bought these screws um, so these are they're actually like servo screws um, but the nice thing about these is, is if you can see there they've got a hex head and they're nice they're going to sit nice and flush with the uh, with the cowl as well um, they've just got like a, a fairly shallow dome head on them so that's what I'm going to use to fasten the cowl on I'll have whoop, <laughs> nearly tipped the model up there so going to have one screw there in the centre uh, and then probably one on the side there, one on that side there and then underneath here I'll have one in here and then one in there and this side particularly this just this does come in quite easily so it just moves as you can see there but I just need when I fasten that in with a screw I just need to um, pull that in a bit so it's nice and tight against the uh, fuselage but yeah there we go cows on that's a big relief for me really starting to take shape now you can see the exhaust is going to obviously just come out the side here and point downwards which is quite nice as well so it's n not going to be spraying too badly all over the the uh, fuselage and back of the plane um, so that's that's quite a nice position for it I think there the only thing I've got to decide now is where to put my little um, quick fill valve and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it here because um, I can get to the back of this because there's, there's a slot there which you can probably just about see the light's not great there but so I think I can put it there but what I'll have to do is I'll have to unmount the engine again so it's a good job I haven't loctited the bolts on the engine just yet in just in case I did have to take it off so I think I'm definitely going to have to do that in order to um, to fasten that quick fill valve on um, but that will sit nice into there obviously you won't see it and I can just hook my uh, fuel pump up to that to fill the tank up okay so what I've done I've just adjusted the cow slightly actually while I've been uh, just messing around here with the camera and as you can see that's a lot more central now so I don't think I'm going to have a problem with the spinner there, so that's pretty good. The only thing I'm going to have to maybe do is just take a tiny little bit off the corner inside here, because it's just where the cow wraps around. It's just that's really touching the cylinder head there, so I'll, I'll just trim the edge of that off, um, and then um, 
that'll allow me to move it around even more as well actually so and then I can get it in position before I then put my uh, mounting screws in place so I'll just get that done and I'll get the cow mounted I'll get the holes drilled for the cow um, so that's all ready to go basically and one of the things I'll do once I'm happy with the position of it and I've drilled the holes uh, then what I'll do is I will screw the screws in back them off again and then just drip some thin CA into the holes just to really uh, harden those holes up and hopefully stop the screws from um, coming out or making the hole too big. So I'll get that done and I'll show you the results of that and then I think that will wrap it up for this video. So um, I'll be right back. Okay, so that's the cowl mounted. These screws have gone in quite nicely. Uh, the only thing I have found is that the uh, Allen size, Allen key size or hex key, whatever you want to call it, is um, really small and I have got some really small ones knocking about somewhere but what I was hoping is that it would use this one which is 1.5 mils because this is the smallest one I've got in this kind of a tool but I think it's about a millimetre because this won't go in. So that was a bit of a fast getting those and I ended up using a star wrench actually to, to put those in uh, which isn't ideal but um, I, I will dig out my tiny little set of allen keys that I've got so I can uh, do them properly but really pleased with the way that the cow's gone on but it's gone on I've got it nice and central now um, you probably can't quite make it out on the camera but that's pretty much uh, square or central probably is, is the better word really since it's not square at all but um, you know what I mean it's nice and central the prop mount inside the cow so then when I get the nose cone on that should be perfect uh, and it just sticks out it probably sticks out a little bit too much maybe but the nose cone that I'm going to get will should um, protrude further back than the than the back plate of the the nose cone so I think actually it's going to be spot on so at the moment I've got one screw in here and then I've got two screws one under here and then one under the other side so at the minute I've just got three screws in but that that is holding it nice and solid so, okay guys so that's this episode finished hope you've enjoyed watching it um, I've enjoyed filming it so far and um, the next one is going to be all about getting all the little bits done so radio gear installed fuel tank installed um, getting Loctite on all the various bits that need Loctite and getting the needle valve sorted out, uh, prop, spinner, all those little bits that you need to do obviously to uh, complete the model. So that's going to be the next episode. If you've made it this far in this, this episode and you've watched it to, to as, as far as you have then really appreciate that and if you could help me out by giving me a thumbs up and giving me a subscribe that would really help me. Uh, I'm nearly at 500 subscribers once I hit 500 I can then start posting pictures and things like that into YouTube um, for all my subscribers so I can sort of start posting a lot more regular content really and keep you up to date on things that are going on. Um, so thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you soon for the next one.